Hey, welcome to another video. I'm going to start off this video with, um, I think, some pretty shocking statistics. Um, bear with me. I'll move on to some a little bit more cheerful content towards the, the second half of the video, okay? What we're talking about here is deaths of despair. Before I talk about that, I want to cover what precedes this, you know, what comes before it. And that is living a life of despair, lives of despair. Henry Thoreau put it very well when he said that the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. But the mass of people lead, lead lives of quiet desperation. And that's no more apparent than today. You know, it's a quote that I keep coming back to in my life, or it was a quote that I used to use on myself a lot when I was um, when I was drinking because it really does paint a pretty lucid picture of what my life was like when I was drinking and you know from my clients uh, it is that same picture that I see over and over again in other people you know and it's it's the desperation of trying to hold on to an old habit and the desperation of trying to change it the same thing and that conflict that is there uh, you know I've sure have seen the same signs that same picture not only in myself you know you can see things in yourself that you don't see in other people the people that you're hanging around with and I should have seen that in those people as well you know those people who are enabling you to do what you're doing uh, those people that I call my friends and those that shared that part of my life with me now there are three types of deaths of despair there's suicide there's drug overdose uh, including alcohol overdose and then there's alcohol related death uh, and you could switch out any uh, drug related deaths as well but you know I think that we've got that covered here in overdose uh, and some of these overlap with each other of course you know um, you know you're going to get people who have got cirrhosis of the liver who take their own lives you've got people who've got cirrhosis of the liver who overdose that kind of thing so now before I tell you the figures just know that these figures have been increasing. They've been increasing 10 to 20% year on year for the last five years, particularly in the West, right? The last year's statistics show for the first time, this is uh, from the US, that in the US, the overdose, overdose rate for the first time was over 100,000 people. Overdose is over 100,000 people. And that includes fentanyl, of course, uh, which is becoming a big problem in the States. And all three together, when you combine all these three things, suicide, overdose, alcohol, you've got three million per year people worldwide dying from alcohol. And I think that's a conservative estimate. You've got 600,000 drug overdoses and you've got 700,000 suicides. You know, looking at um, this from the perspective of since the turn of the century, you've got over 100 million people that have died from deaths of despair and you could argue some of these cases but like I said I think that's a, that's a fairly conservative estimate now there's huge amounts of people right this is massive amounts of unnecessary deaths and I think it was tipped over the edge by lockdowns by the, the social isolation that's why you're seeing this increase um, it's difficult to see this increase not being impacted by COVID or by the responses to COVID. And I'm not going to go into that here. I think there's plenty of people uh, who have an opinion one way or another on that. And there's enough division in the world without me adding to it. So I'm not going to go through that. But I will say that part of the problem is an increase in manufactured fear. Fear to sell newspapers, fear to sell news programs, fear to sell products, um, fear of this enemy or that enemy, fear of this side or that side, fear of your neighbor, fear of ideology fear of thought and this is happening on all sides right it's one of the reasons i live here in the middle of nowhere right because i don't want to have to listen to certain types of bullshit i don't listen to news i don't watch the newspapers you know trying to keep that level of uh bullshit to a minimum in my life right um you know obviously you know this is one of one of the biggest impacts on lifespan, cutting short lifespan in the saddest way possible. You know, I love my life. 
there were times during my drink, drinking days when, you know, partly because of my drinking, partly uh, because of the consequences of my drinking, when that thought briefly crossed my mind, right? When I wasn't having a great time of it, um, you know, when things were going crap for me, when I was thinking that there was no way out of this. And, you know, those thing, things do happen to, um, you know, those thoughts happen to cross your mind. And that was just something that I had. And thankfully for me, it was just a thought. You know, it was a brief thought, but um, I always liked being alive. You know, even at, at the worst times in my life, even when the worst shit was happening in my life, even, you know, in, in those times of deep depression or, you know, when shit was just not going right, um, I loved my life still, you know, maybe not in the moment, but in general. And I can't imagine not being that way, especially since I got my house in order, you know. Um, I think if I had one desire in my life since I'd stopped drinking alcohol, it's that everyone I meet, I try and in my own small way to try and yeah, help them to um, love their life a little bit more. Uh, to I think we can all find that love or that passion or that enthusiasm for life in different ways, right? You know? Um, I was in New York a few years ago. Uh, I was on a podcast with the a guy called Ed Mullins, who was the president of the Sergeant's Benevolent Association of the New York Police Department. And they represented, I think it was five, about 5,000 New York Police Department sergeants. And one of the topics that we talked about was alcohol uh, within the rank and file of the M NYPD, right? And the difficulties that alcohol brings within that community. Now, a related topic that we spoke about on, in, in detail was suicide um, and how it tied with alcohol because, you know, there was nearly always alcohol involved. Uh, and with alcohol, it's, it's just easier to take your life in the moment. You know, it's very quick, especially if you've got access to a gun. Um, I can't imagine how those figures have risen now that everything... You know everything that's going on within the police departments you know i was there before covid before defund the police so i have to give a shout out to any cop anywhere not only just in new york but anywhere in the world you know it's a tough job um and the same could be said of the military you know i also wanted to shout out today for a good friend of mine who is uh, has spent a lot of time stationed abroad and he's come back now to the states and he's starting a new a career path Right within the US military and that is trying to help prevent mostly young men from taking their lives you know obviously there's women in there as well but mostly young men uh, it's valuable work brother and I wish you all the very best you're going to save a lot of lives I know that um, so anyway we started out by talking about three leading deaths of despair and I think one of the biggest causes of despair in anyone's life is having no meaning you know, if you give a man enough reason to live, he'll figure out the the how, uh, the how to do the things that he needs to do or she needs to do. Now, one of the best books I've ever read uh, about finding meaning in life is Man's Search for Meaning by a guy called Viktor Frankl. Um, in the next video, I'm going to share with you a couple of things that he said that really stuck with me and that have made a difference in my life. But for now, I just wanted to say to anyone who is feeling down or depressed or anyone who's having a hard time in life, there is always meaning in life. And it's often the case that you don't have to look very far for that meaning. Viktor Frankl said that when we're no longer able to change a situation, we are going to be challenged to change ourselves, right? Uh, and he was emphasizing that even in the most unimaginably challenging and tragic situations in life, Anybody can find meaning and purpose in their lives. And he was saying that those who were able to find meaning, um, those who were able to find a, a why in their lives, no matter how horrific or terrible or difficult that their circumstances happened to be in that moment, they were much more likely to endure and survive, um, to survive any of the hardships that they faced. And it, it, if you're thinking of this, ultimate act of desperation in your life right please look out for somebody who can help you look for somebody who can talk to you 
you know don't let the moment of despair send you down a path of no return you know in life there are going to be situations that are beyond your control everyone faces that everyone faces setbacks or tragedies or circumstances that we just can't change no matter how much we wish it weren't so you know that's life and i think it's important that when you go through these times um it's crucial that you move your focus inwards and try to see how you can change yourself how you can change your attitudes or how you can change your responses to what's happening and i include when we're talking about stopping drinking alcohol i include that and the fear that's associated with that there's always a lot of fear and the conflict that everyone's going through you know while um you might not be able to control any of the external stuff that's going on any of the external things that are happening you can control your mindsets and you can control how you choose to perceive and respond to the things that are happening in your life you know there's a mountain of meaning and purpose inside of you you just have to find it and you have to tap into that and that's the real source of all inner strength and resilience right it's going to allow you to cope with all the challenges all the hardships that you come across not only in unplugging from the booze but also in anything else that's going to follow in your life so i really encourage you to engage with that inner self um cultivate that inner self cultivate really authentic connections not only um with your past and your future but with other people as well you know and start pursuing a life of alignment with your deepest values and your deepest aspirations now remember it's not about perfection this journey it's always about progress we're always looking at onwards and upwards uh, i'm at a stage in my life where i'm learning so much more because i'm building on what i've learned before um but it's always a learning process i'm still learning i'm going to be learning until the end of my days you know so now if you're looking for more structured help from me in this journey of transformation as i said before not only in unplugging from alcohol but in finding value finding meaning in your life um consider joining our program habits v2 you can find the link in the uh, to the full program in the description down below um you know and together i want to help you to step across into that potential um of a clear mind and a healthier life so watch out for the next video where i'll be continuing to talk about this topic i think it's an important one take care of yourself and speak to you soon onwards and upwards bye now